Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these absolutely beautiful star easel cards using the brand new Dovecraft Paper Posies collection. I've been waiting for this and it's absolutely stunning. Now I may have already shared an unboxing video or it may come after this video, I'm not sure, but either way I'll link it up here and I will show you in more detail this beautiful collection. But I wanted to do my first project with it, I wanted a really nice card style that was going to show off all of the papers and this Star Easel card I thought worked really well. I was actually asked to do this for a commission, not these ones, but I've made this Star Easel card for a future magazine commission which will be out in a couple of months time um, and that that was what first introduced me to this style so then I had a little look online and I found a tutorial by a German lady from 2016 I'll link hers below but there's lots of other tutorials as well but the great thing about this card is that you can make it any size you want I have used pre-made card blanks for this and I'll talk you through all those sizes in the video but it can be made any size you want you can make your envelopes as well if you've got the envelope punch board or you can use the envelope there's lots of different tools to make your own envelopes and stuff but I've got an A6 size so that's using an A6 card this is using a 6x6 card and this is using a 5x7 card and depending on what papers you use so if you use a pattern paper and you want it, a pattern piece for this and for this you will actually be able to make two 5x7 cards because the leftovers that you have will make another card um, but if you're using yeah, just plain papers or mirrored and stuff like that then um, you would just need uh, what is it two pieces and it will do all your mats and layers but again I'll explain all that in there for you but if I just bring them up the one thing I would say about this card is that I think you're going to have to send a little maybe diagram or a small a small instruction on how to put it together for when they get it out of the envelope because that's how it will be in the envelope you can see that it all fits in nicely okay but when they take it out, I know, for example, if I gave this to my nan and I wasn't with her, she'd just think, oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, thank you. And you've got room on the back there to write your message. But she would just kind of put that piece up there and maybe rest that there or lie it there. She wouldn't know what to do. So I will personally probably give these to people that I actually see in person. Um, and then when they take it out, I can just show them what they need to do. But do take that, you know, do, do bear that in mind because, um, yeah, you, you might be surprised what some people do. Because although we see it very, you know, easily and we, we see it and think, oh, of course you do it like that. Why would you, why would you think you don't? Um, you'd be surprised people don't. Even with a straightforward easel card, I've seen people just kind of flap it around and not know what to do with it. So that would be my only one. This is, I, you know, it's one of those cards that it is in two pieces. So not everybody's going to know what to do with it but I love the impact of it. I think it's it's a real mantle pleaser. I think that's gonna look absolutely stunning. So yeah, that's the five by seven. Again, if I bring that up close, you can really see. And they got a great, they do stand up by the way, cause I've got these lying down. They all stand up perfectly. So I'll just bring that one in. You can have them in, you know, as close as you want or more spread out. If I just bring that one up there, you can see that, that stands up. And then this one here, but I'm more swayed towards working with rectangle cards so you know you're a6 you're five by seven and you get this kind of style so it's got a very tall kind of stand and the the star i don't know seems to be a bit more balanced with the six by six this piece is very big on the bottom but it still looks really really nice you can see there so um yeah it's entirely up to you what sizes you go for like i said make it you know to what suits you best because then you know you may be somewhere where you like to make smaller cards and you like smaller envelopes so you can go even smaller than this and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I tried to explain as much as possible. Hopefully it doesn't confuse you. Um, it is straightforward to make. Once you've done one or two, then yeah, you're, you'll be away with it. So yeah, let's get into the tutorial. This is the amazing, oh, it's just so yummy. I love it. And I'm really like, oh. Yeah, like I said, came through the door and I just ripped into it straight away and it's the Paper Posies. It's absolutely beautiful and it comes with a decoupage. I love their decoupage pads. And what I've done, just to give you an example of how they all look, is that you get two with that one. I take these ones here. You get lots of spares as well, which I love. So it's all extra pieces on each page. And then there's that one. So that is one topper there. You can see all the layers to it. Absolutely beautiful and it's got that sparkle on it and then on the front of that one you briefly saw it there that's another one for a special friend then you get this one that you can make up just for you beautiful you have a little something that's going to make a lovely tag on a little gift box then we have happy birthday okay you can see the dimension on there 
with love. I think that's again a really nice tag, but it would look lovely on a card as well. This beautiful heart, which has loads of different toppers that you can have with it, and you can mix and match. You could have that lots of love with it. I think it had that love was the one that came with it, so you could put it through the middle or underneath. You can see how that works, and then you've got another tag there, but you could certainly you know, have that on the front of a card. So those are there, so you get eight all together, and you get eight designs, but you get three or four pages of each. Let's have a look. No, three pages of each. Okay, so that's that. And then, like I said, there is the paper pad there. I'm not sure what papers I'm going to do yet, but um, we will get to that in a moment. So into the card itself, really, really simple, like I said. So I have pieces because I've already cut each one. So you grab a six by six card blank. So these are mine here, okay? If you don't have card blanks and you would want to make a six by six size, although it's not that size when it's put together, you see how they, they kind of, you know, it's just huge. It will be a piece of 12 by six and along the 12 inch side score at six, fold in half. Then what you want to do is grab your trimmer. If you don't have a trimmer, use a ruler and draw a line from the top of the center point down to the bottom right, top of the center point down to the bottom left. And you're just going to cut. So I'm just going to lie this one down in my trimmer. Make sure you get your points bang on and just trim each side. Like I said, this is six by six, so if it's a five by seven, you do exactly the same. Measurements for that would be in my blog, but that would be a piece of 10 by seven and along the 10 inch side, score at five. So now you'll have this piece, you can see already, that's this piece here, so that's your stand. And then these, we're gonna cross over and it will become your point. I'm gonna talk about this in more detail in a moment, but that will sit in there. That's with six by six and then I've gone and cut it again because when I do my pattern paper, you'll have enough to decorate too. So by the end of this tutorial, I'm gonna have six of these cards, but they're so quick and easy to do. And then here is your A6 size. So this is half of A4 in the UK, or it would be half of your letter size paper um, if you're outside of the UK. Um, and again, I'm just burnish that a bit more with my finger. So this is roughly, so ours in the, is just, well, I think, yeah, it's just over four by, um, just under six, okay? But again, open it up and you're going to line up the middle score line there with the bottom and again this side here, like so. And then you can see we've got this piece, but again, as soon as I put that over there and make it into that kind of star shape, I don't know, you just seem to have a, a better shape, I think. And usually I make larger cards, but I actually think for this one, and if you want to get this in a normal size envelope or a smaller envelope, you're going to be better off making it from the smaller card. But they're all going to look lovely. And again, I've gone and done that one there. So now I just want to choose my papers. Also, I should have said at the beginning, I'll put a little reminder up or a little caption. There is free delivery this weekend with Craft Stash. So if you're outside of the UK, because it's worldwide free delivery, you can get your hands on this collection and it's some of the accessories to, for it are really cheap. Um, it's just, it's wonderful. Like I said, I do have all the other parts, but I'm not gonna bring it into this video because it's just for this card, but I will do a separate um, share of this collection and I will link it up here, whether it's been before or not. So you can tell I'm too excited. I just love it when I've got new stuff to play with. So I'm going to choose my papers and I'm gonna, again, I think silver works really nice with this collection. So I'm gonna use silver as my mirrored mat there. You can see just the way it pokes through. And I'm gonna decide on my papers. I'm gonna get them all cut down for both sizes and then we'll be back and I will show you how to stick it all together. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut all my layers. And I'm just showing you how it will look here. So this is the six by six. I think I must have confused myself at the beginning, but anyway, but this here, okay, so you'll want two pieces of mirror cardstock because it's the same size for the star part, but this is a five and a quarter squared, okay? And I've just cut on the diagonal right through the middle, and then you can pop one on that side and one on that side. And then with your pieces that will cut from here, Okay, and now we're going to become our star shape. You will have your other one from your other piece again, just cut on that diagonal and they will go in and mat all of those. Okay, pop that one up there. Then with the pattern paper again, 
I mean, if it's directional, be careful because you are going to move them around. This is kind of directional, but it still works. Again, cut right down through the middle, and I'm going to have, yeah, this one's going to go on the background on the stand. So one there and one there. And this was, I think I gave the measurements for these, five inches squared. Okay. And then again, with another piece, just cut on the diagonal and it will go through there, like so. So with the square, you won't make two. I think it's just with the rectangle shapes. Or well, maybe it was just the way I cut anyway. I might have confused myself, but I'm telling you how you can do it. So, and then there's that one. And that's going to go on there. So now, I'll stick it all together when I go and stick the other one as well. But that is going to go over like that once it's all stuck down. Topper in the middle, and then there's going to be the stand. And it will look good when it's all together. So that's the six by six. And then for the A6 size, so again, that's where we originally cut it. So I've got my mirrored cardstock here, and this measures three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And I'm going to cut first of all from top left to bottom right. Okay, so top left to bottom right, and you will have one here. But you can't obviously put that on that side because if you flip it over, you're not going to have anything. So you'd use this to cover that one. Then with the next one, you need to cut from top right to bottom left. So it's the is the or you know it's the direction that you cut these pieces. Otherwise, you're going to have waste. And then this one will go there, and this one will go there. And then we're going to. Again, stick these ones over each other, so they will be something like that. Again, we're going to stick in a moment. Just want to explain this all, and that's going to go in there like so. And then my pattern paper, I'd already done that one there. So that one I've cut from top left to bottom right, so I can put one of those there, and this one can go under there. Ah, that was it. I remember now why I said you can make two cards because I don't want this pattern on the front. So I will have that as a spare because then for this one, I want to get that side. So I've got a cut from top right to bottom left, just like we did with the other one. But because I want a different pattern, so now that one will go under here but I don't want mine to all be the same pattern. So if you do, you know, you're happy to have that pattern on everything, then that one will just go over that one and that one will go over that one. But I want a different pattern. So I've got these two spare. So that's why now they will go onto my other stand that I cut. I've got to do my silver mat. So rather than waste it, just make up another card. Okay, so now for the pattern piece on top of here, I think I'm going to have... I'm going to bring in this one because this was already cut into. Now, because I want to cover these pieces, so I've got a cut from top left to bottom right. And then that one's going to go over there. This spare one will go over onto this side. Yeah. So for that one, I need to then cut from top left down to bottom right. So that one will go under there. And then I've got all those pieces to do exactly the same on that same size card. I just need to cut the silver mats. Okay, so just lay out all the, the card and then you'll know what angles you wanna do everything. So if you're working on a square, you don't need to do that. And if you want it to all be the same pattern paper, you don't need to do what I done. But because I like having the contrast of that against that, I think it looks really nice, then you will need to cut two of all your colors. So I'll try and write that down as best as I can. I think it's better to just watch this video and you can see what I'm doing. But I'm gonna stick all that down I'm just going to cut my silver mats for that one and um, and then yeah, tell you how to actually stick it all together. So just stick all of these mats down onto each piece first of all and then we'll do some cutting and so on. Also if you want to do the back you will just need to cut the same size of the silver mats. Okay, so whatever size I gave you for that one, cut another one if you want to do that in your 
you know, your white and everything on the back there. Okay, so all my mats and layers are done, so now we want to create the star shape. So I would say is have it in this orientation, and these points here are what are always going to stay at the bottom, but you want to, like, overlap, so you could do it like that, or you could overlap like that. Can you do that one? Yeah, it's the same way, isn't it? And you just want to kind of work, look at these points. So if you want them, these ones to point up higher, then it would be a bit more like that. But you want to make sure that this is like even on both sides. I'm quite happy with that, like that. So use some liquid glue and just, you know, pop a blob in like the middle like that. And then it will allow you to be able to move this into the shape that you want without any glue oozing all out the sides. So I think that's about, I think that's about right. Like I said, I'm using a square. This is the first time. I prefer definitely using a rectangle shape. So, you know, have a play around. And um, I've got a bit of glue there on that. I'm going to have to get that off in a minute because it's bugging me. But now I've got that shape. Then you want to decide where you're going to have your slots, okay, that you're going to cut in. Now on these ones I came up three and a half inches. Yeah, three and a half. I thought that was nice. So what you've got to do is think about once they slot in, you know, they're going to obviously come down. You don't want this to come down past here because then the card won't stand up. So I think about there. So that's where the slot needs to end, okay. So I'm going to say, I think you should come up at four inches. Okay, so I'm going to grab a pencil and I'm going to mark a little light pencil mark just there, very lightly. And again, coming up this side here. This is for the six by six, okay? So they are all different. And then with a pair of scissors, now you want to make sure you've got your mats on the back stuck down as well because you can cut through it all at the same time. If you don't it's not the end of the world but you just have to cut back down again. But then you want to cut really straight. Now if you want to draw a pencil with a T-square ruler but just cut down and I've cut the width of this which is about an inch. Just under seven eighths. And again I'm going to have to use my longer scissors. This has got stripes on this pattern paper so I can follow that. But just come down. Yeah that's fine. And then you can bring in your star and push it down both those slots. Make sure you push it right down like so. And there you've got your star. So now I just need my topper. Now this one can actually hold a bigger one. So I'm almost wondering whether to bring in one of these ones and then add some writing or maybe use... The love there looks really nice. Well, the just for you, actually the just for you does work. We'll play with toppers in a moment, but that's what you want to do for the six by six. So let's just have a play around. So again, with these ones, I think this is what I mean about the star. I think it just. So I'll put that one again. Have it like that. Okay, and then pop them over the top. And I just think it gives you, because you're working with different sizes on each side, it gives you a more star-like effect. So again, I'm just going to pop a blob of glue and then I can just play around. In fact, I think that's fine. So I've gone for quite a little triangle down here. Okay, and then again, kind of lie it on here, make sure it doesn't come off so about there. But then you want to cut your slot. So, I think three inches. So it's about right, so I've done th so three inches on this one, three and a half on the five by seven, and then that one I said was four, didn't I? My memory's terrible. I'm sure I just said four, yeah. So three, and then come up this side, do three, and just do this one as well. Again, cut down about, you know, seven eighths, one eighth, seven eighths to one inch. As long as they're the same, you don't want to cut too far down because otherwise the star will touch the bottom. But um, just make sure you do cut them the same. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then, oh no, I don't want that one on here because that's the same pattern. So let's just do this one. This one. And slot in there. Again, make sure it goes right down. Look. 
I definitely am loving the rectangle shapes more. This is a really nice size. It still looks big, even though it's the smaller size. I never do A6 size cards. That's why I've got a load of these. But it works really well for this star fold effect because of the, you know, it, it appears much bigger, I think. So I do like that size. Um, and I think a lot of you are going to like that one because it will fit, obviously, into your smaller envelopes. So again, I'm just going to stick this one together. And again... I mean, rub out any little pencil marks that you might have had there. I'll do that in a moment, but now, look at that. Isn't it cool? Okay, so toppers, definitely now I'm seeing the happy birthday on that one. I think the red frame around that background, I think, looks really nice. So I'm going to stick that one on there. I'm going to stick... So that heart looks nice. I think I'm going to do, yeah, the big just for you on that one. And I think that one with your lovely maybe. Oh, what's that? Your lovely in the green. No, I don't like the green. Yeah, I'm going to have your lovely through the middle of it or something like that. So I'm going to go and stick them all down. So I've done all of the toppers, everything's stuck together, it's just the envelope, so I just want to do a little recap. So here is the A6 size, I think it's adorable, and again just bring it up, you can see that topper, how lovely does everything look, really really pleased with that one. Then, so I've got two of those, that's the other one there, see them there. Then this is the 6x6, love it, I think it still looks wonderful, really really nice, I just, I don't know, something about the star for me, it's just a little bit different but still really like it, very big. But um, again, I'm gonna talk through envelopes in a moment. And then still my favorites are though, because I do like a big card, is the five by seven. They just, I love that one. Just love that topper. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. And that one there. So when you're making your envelopes, so let's start off with this one here because I haven't seen, this one might actually just fit into a normal five by seven. You have to kind of like lay it down on your mat and your grid and then see where you are. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so it's, you can get it into a five width wide, okay? And then we can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But then your point is gonna go off. You see there, if I line that up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's going up to seven and a half. So you are gonna have to make an envelope. So we're gonna have to make, let's just write this down. So this is gonna be a, so the A6, will go into a five, it's a five by seven and a half card. Okay, that's what we need to look at. So that's for the A6. So we'll flatten that one down. This is just, I'm showing you just how I work things out. So now the six by six, so we know the width, we can get it into, it'd be six. So we wanna keep this into it, but the height, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine see it's going off so we're going to have to it's it we're going to we can say nine because they always give you a quarter inch on the envelope punch board it's just under actually so i think we'll be okay so six by nine so that is your six by six will be a six by nine card okay and then finally this one here and this is going to be huge so this is what i wanted i think this is going to make you know, people decide what size they want. I think a lot of you are going to go for that A6 size. Plus you could, you know, use your A4, like I said, A4 paper, letter paper and so on. So this here, we can get it one, two, three, four, five, six. So it'd be six by uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, actually, no, we're okay. I think it's gonna be the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Six by nine. So it's going to go in the same, yeah, same size. So that is your five by seven. It will be a six by nine card. Okay, so I've got to make five envelopes. Okay, so that's the measurements there for those. Then, with my envelope punch board, I can then go to this here. Now, they've got here six by eight and a half is the last one, and it's telling you you need a piece of 11 and a half by 11 and a half. But if we do 12 by 12 and score at five, 
that will be the envelope size for those and I'll show you that. So you're going to want, if you're doing the 6x6 size or the 5x7 size, you're going to want a piece of 12x12 12 12 paper and I'm going to use the paper from the collection because it's perfect for making envelopes. But the smaller A6 one here, which is we want a 5x7.5, if we go up here we've got 5x7.5 so we need a piece of 10x10 10 10 paper. Okay, so I'm going to go and get my papers ready. Okay, so I've done all the envelopes. I've already put one of the A6, so you see there, it all fits in nicely, okay? And like I said, you have to put some instructions probably in it if you're maybe not with the person when they open the card. So that's that one. And then the 6x6 and the 5x7 are actually the same size envelope. So there's the 5x7 in that one. Is that the 5x7? Yeah, because the 6x6 is there, so you'll see that one in there and it fits in fine and then again the same with the other five by seven is in there and then I'm going to do these two with you so the 10 by 10 this is this piece here grab my little stylus so for the 10 by 10 which is a five, five by seven and a half card four and one eighth is your first score and punch my hair everywhere there. Um, so I just punch and score don't worry if you don't go all the way down. Then I go to the opposite end, or opposite side, sorry. Punch and score. And then I just bring it around and just pop it in and line up this right angle with the score line there. Just like so. Punch and then score. And you want that score line to join perfectly there. And again, like so. I do mine slightly different, just because I prefer, I think you get a nicer result. So there's my envelope for that one. And then this is the 12 by 12. So it's not on here, the measurement, but you can use it. So it's a piece of 12 by 12. And the last score line they have on here is four and seven eighths. But you can go up to five, and you can actually go to five and a quarter, which I've used as well in tutorials. So for this one, this is my own one. So you want to line it up to five, punch and score. Flip it to the opposite side, punch and score, and then again, you're easier to bring this down until that right angle lines up with your score line. Punch and then score until they meet, and then again, bring around that side. And as I always say whenever I use this, I've got a tutorial on how to use the punch board, and I will link that up here, so you can go to that one. So that's those. And then you just want to fold and burnish all of your score lines. Decide on what you want to be the bottom. Fold in the sides and just run some tape. I'm actually going to seal all these with my new wax seal kit. So when I do go to use them, I'll just get one of those out because you can make them any colour you want. And then... Again, the bottom of this one. You have the wax seals, you can just pop tape under here and here and then leave the tape on there until you come to seal it. But now I can get my six by six. I need to put the backs on these and stamp a sentiment, but that will go in there. And then my last little A6 size fits in there perfectly. You can just move them around until you get all the points in. But there are all my envelopes and five cards and you know what they haven't taken me long to do they really don't once you get your head around the you know whether you need to cut from left to right or right to left or if you're using pattern paper or all plain things like that they are they're really really fun i thoroughly enjoyed these and i hope you like the ones for the magazine that i've done as well but uh, yeah, all those lovely envelopes as well. Just love this collection. Okay, so there's the cards again. Let me know which ones you prefer. Is it the A6, the 6x6 or the 5x7? I think I'm in between these two sizes here. The 6x6 is still really nice as well. But obviously do take into account the size of the envelopes. You do need considerably bigger ones, but you can make them all on the envelope punch board. But if you'd rather use your own, you know, you would need even a smaller card size to this one, so go smaller than the A6, and then you'll probably fit it into a standard size envelope. So have a little play around, and um, like I said, you can make them any size. You can do 8x8. I mean, you'd probably then have to put it in a big, like, mailing envelope, but can you imagine the, an 8x8 square card be this beautiful, you know, huge... Uh, or an 8x6. In fact, I think an 8x6 size would look really nice because I'm more swayed towards rectangle 
cards to make this. So I think the eight by six would look, yeah, pretty spectacular. So there you go, with a big number in the middle as well. I keep getting loads of ideas. But anyway, I hope you like it. I hope you love this new collection as much as I do. All the links for it, as always, will be shared below. And like I said, I do believe this weekend it's free worldwide delivery with Craft Stash where you can get this whole collection. So let me know what you think. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope I've explained it well enough. And I'll be back again soon with another one. Thanks a lot. Bye.